Hello everyone, and this is Have Faith, Let It Begin. My name is Angel. I'd like to thank all of you for your well wishes and for your kind words and all of your feedback regarding this show and how it's changed your lives and how it's inspired you to be a better person. These are words of just a few from my emails. I would also like to give a warm thank you to Gabby Santana, who has put this introduction to our show with a song that is just inspiring to me each and every day. Gabby Santana wrote the intro. It's called Tested. I encourage all of you to check her out at her YouTube channel, Gabby Santana. Don't forget, everybody, this show has our own YouTube channel as well. It's AWS Santana. We are working on a liked page for Facebook right now, but as of right now, you can look at the descriptions below and take a look at all the platforms that are available to you. And um, if you have any questions on how to download them, we are also in the process of creating our very first um, app, our own app. So this way you don't have to worry about uh, going to third party. We're going to be working on launching our own app and hopefully that will debut in August. With that being said, I would like to start off by saying, have faith, let it begin, has truly inspired me to wake up and go to bed each and every day with a smile on my face. Now, don't get me wrong when I say that. I have always done that anyway, but my smile just continues to get bigger and bigger. My wife would probably tell you, That's probably why you're putting on some weight because you're opening your mouth big enough that you can fit more food in it. (laughs) But I'm serious when I tell you that it has truly been a remarkable um, almost a month since we debuted. Our first show aired on June 16th and we've just been going and going ever since. I would like to also start off by wishing a happy birthday to my niece, uh, Bella. Happy birthday to you. Love you very much. Enjoy your day. A lot of times when I am checking my email or my own personal uh, Facebook page, I am constantly reminded and asked, how did I get my faith? How is it that you are always happy all the time? Well, this is going to be a two-part show. So to answer that, I'd have to begin with, why am I happy? So today's episode will be called, why am I happy? Tomorrow's episode will be, having faith. So let's get started. As early as I can remember... I have always felt that life was so precious. I always just enjoyed waking up, coming down the stairs, having my mom or dad make me breakfast. I am a proud daddy's boy and mama's boy. Always have and always will be. My parents raised me, as you've heard before in previous episodes, um, to be a well-mannered man. Anytime I went out in the world... Um, with my parents, my parents would, I would always watch them and study them. Uh, believe it or not, I did. As a young kid, I would watch my father shake hands with people and then he would address them by sir or miss and he would teach me. He would say, that's how you greet a person. That's how you remember them. Always say their name a couple times. You'll remember their name. My mom always loved to make people smile. She was very out. She, she is a very outgoing person. And she always loved putting smiles on kids and adults' faces. My mom was a crossing guard for the town that we live in. And she used to dress up like a clown on Halloween. Never been done before. It it actually was on the um, newspapers and the local papers. And um, I just always was inspired by that. I'd always spend time with my mom and I'd always listen. And I'd talk to her. And I wasn't afraid to share the things 
that happened to me, whether they were good, bad, even embarrassing. So the first thing you're probably thinking about, okay, but how does that make you happy? Well, that was the foundation. The foundation of that was learning and being around people that had those qualities. As I went and got older, I, if I didn't understand something, if things made me upset or if things made me um, lose my smile even for a second, I would always ask my mom, because I was with her a lot. My dad worked a lot of hours and and then by then he was, you know, doing every other, I think once a month or two, two weekends a month of the National Guard. Um, I would ask my mom, I'd say, Mom, you know, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. And she would say to me, you have to give everything to God. You have to believe and trust that bad things happen for a reason. And good things happen all the time if you if you are aware of your surroundings, your environments. Now I'm saying that a little bit with with bigger words. She explained it to me, obviously in words that I couldn't understand back then. So, you know when they always say there's a part of your life that changes you? There was a couple influential people in my life. Uh, there was a gentleman next door named George. George was a non-blood, but I, he was a non-blood relative. Let's put it that way. You ever have a neighbor that you just, um, you take in or a, a, an older gentleman or older woman and you, you just consider them your grandfather? Well, gr- George was like my grandfather. And he was such a nice man. He always called my house and say, what's your name? Where do you live? He would take care of me when my mom had to work late. There were just so many things about him that I respected. The way he treated the mailman, the way he treated people that walked by his house. He would wave, he would greet them. He would always smile. He'd always have jokes. I would just like to point out that in addition to George and people are going to really really think this is crazy but it's the truth wrestling you know it today as WWE when I was a kid it was WWF World Wrestling Federation now it's the World Wrestling Entertainment wrestling actually changed my life and not in the ways that you think Yes, of course I knew that it was entertainment and I know that it was all predetermined. However, it was the joy that I had in rooting for my favorites. It was the joy I had in waiting for those Saturday night's main events, superstars of wrestling. All those things that I looked forward to. It was watching all these wrestlers uh, behave and treat people with respect. Wrestling today is a little different. That you know now it's all you know. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I still watch a little bit, but wrestling today is just more um, soap operish. Um, they have to banter back and forth, and they 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 call each other names. But back then it was more territorial. At least that was my opinion. Back then it was more, you know, what they stood for, what they believed in. And what they fought for. And that's that was something that I just took in. And I used that fuel. I used that fire to help me in any and any and every situation. Whether it was a kid at school that tried to bully me. Um, and I overcame it. Never got bullied again. Whether it was going out into the world and being proud of who I was I take that from wrestler Hulk Hogan who ins- inspired me to say my, my prayers eat my vitamins and train now I didn't train I'll be honest Mr. Hogan I was a little chunky guy so 
But I did add that fourth one, which was believe in yourself. So, as you can see, as I'm getting older, I had a lot of those things that came in. And if you notice, I haven't mentioned the word God really yet. Only that my mom mentioned to believe and trust in God. At 13 years of age, I was diagnosed with scoliosis. From from 13 years of age all the way until I was 18, I would undergo so many doctor visits to the point where, and you've heard this on a, on a, on a past episode, but here's a little bit more detailed behind the scenes, pulling the curtain behind. When I was going through this, I started to get a little angry. I started to not understand why I was fitted for a back, back brace why I was under the spotlight, so to speak. I couldn't figure out what I had done to deserve this. By the time I reached my senior year, I would undergo the back surgery. And for those of you that don't know the story of the of my back surgery, I encourage you um, to go back and, you know, take a look at the episodes, um, because there is so much, uh, detail as to how I overcame it. But let me get detailed on this, on this particular part of why I'm happy. After, when I was having surgery, um, it was a two part surgery. They had to, the surgery number one was to remove a rib from my back, um, uh, for my back, excuse me. They removed the rib so they can use that rib to uh, fuse the two metal rods on my back. They also took some hip bone. Well, that w- surgery went first. That was extremely painful, the removal of the rib. The second day was the actual fusing of the rods. But I was it was in between those two days that I overheard a young girl who was about 13 to 14 years old being fitted for a brace that was being drilled into her head her spine was nearly shattered due to a motorcycle accident as she was a passenger and I was in the same ICU unit where I overheard her cry and yell out please do not cut my hair they had to cut her hair and all I kept thinking about was I thought I was in pain I thought I was having it worse this poor girl next to me is hasn't even begun high school yet. And she's having a back brace drilled into her head. Things started to change. My mind started to evolve and I started to realize things were not as bad as they seemed. While I was in, uh, in and out of sleep, I started to get restless. A nurse who became very, very, very uh, polite with my family and myself. My mom was sent home because she was overtired. She was with me every day. She had to go to the hotel. And I was by myself. This nurse knew that I, that I was alone. She came off of her shift and literally jumped into my bed and rubbed my head and my hair so that I would fall asleep because I had maximized my pain medication. That to me is amazing. I'll never forget her. I don't remember her name. But if in in any situation, if at all, any point of her life, if she ever gets to hear this message, because I know how God works, if God provides her with this show and she hears and she remembers me, I say thank you. And that was another part of my life. Another part in my mind of that moment that I realized there are many good people out in this world and that I would not allow myself to feel angry because I know at this point something is happening. Somebody is bringing people to me to make me feel better about myself and to think not about the pain. 
after my second surgery, I was in even more pain. And it wasn't so much of the back itself because believe me, when I tell you that my back pains were so bad that when I had the back surgery itself, it was as if that pain, that re release was over. But it was more of the non-movement, um, you know, staples, just the aches that were hurting. But the rib part of the surgery was the worst. I had to cough at a pillow and it, it just, it was brutal. A chaplain walked past, stopped over, and asked if he could pray with me. I told him yes. He asked me if I believed in God. And I told him, of course I do. He asked me if I had a relationship with God. My answer was, I think so. He asked what was attached to my wrist. Before I went to surgery, I told the doctors that I would not go into surgery without this cross that my father gave me. It was made out of wood. They taped it to my wrist. I heard the Lord's prayer and in that moment I felt this piece of joy, this hug and affection, this unbelievable sigh of relief I don't want to say that I heard the words but it's as if I felt the words say everything will be okay from here when I stood up the next couple days later for the first time and I realized I was an inch and a half taller and I took my first steps and I uttered those words thank God and that's from that episode. Thank God. It was at that moment that I said to myself, I will never take life for granted. I will never let anyone steal my joy. And I will never say that I don't believe there is a God and that I don't believe there's such a thing as a bad day. This is part one of how I became happy. And as you can see toward the end, it all began by three or four individuals that came into my life and slowly introducing me to the man that I know as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you stick around for part two called Having Faith. For now, I thank you all for listening. I wish my niece again, Isabella, happy birthday. And I wish all of you a blessed and amazing day. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Have faith. Let it begin. Don't you see that you're Coming